Hi, I'm Kevin. And I'm Amanda. And we are serving up all that jam. All that jam, quick hit. Michael Falls Arano on English Down Project. What goes into the set list choice for the English Town? English Town Project? Well, you know, it's, you know, the English Town show that the Grateful Dead did in 77. Uh, and the reason this whole English Town Project thing came about, let's just roll back here for a second. I'm on the road for 10, 12 years with the new writers at Purple Sage. And everywhere we went, just about, at almost every show, somebody would come up to me and say, I saw you in English Town. Of course, I was personally wasn't there, but, uh, you know, because uh, I wasn't in the band at the time. But I saw you at English Town, or I saw you guys at English Town, or English Town was my first show. I love it. I love it. So at some point um, in, you know, I forget when, maybe early 20s, well, whenever it was, I decided, you know what, would be a good idea. I think I'm just going to put a band together with my friends from Long Island, because that's where I grew up as well. I, at that point, I think I was living in New York or maybe New Jersey or Texas, where I don't remember now. Um, and we'll, we'll play a show. You know, I called up Pete Shapiro um, and he put us into the Brooklyn Bowl uh, in Brooklyn. And we thought, OK, this is great. And we would do the one show. That was it. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, the day he gave us was Sunday of Memorial Day weekend, which, you know, that's a tough one. Or Labor Day weekend. Yeah, it was Labor mm -hmm. Day weekend mm -hmm. because that's the anniversary. Um, so I thought, okay, well, you know, we'll go and have fun. And there'll be some people there, you know, because not everybody's going to go out of town. Um, uh, and two things happened. Fortunately, it was a rainy day. So a lot of people came back early, you know? And, um, so we went to the show, you know, we're backstage, we're eating dinner, you know, we're just going to have some fun. And it turns out that about 500 people showed up and I thought, wow, this is unusual. <laughs> yeah. For a band they don't know anything about, um, on a holiday weekend in the rain, and so since then, since that show, uh, I think we're in our hundredth show now. You know, this year we'll, if it's it's like ninety eight or something like that. So this year we're going to surpass a hundred because I already have a show in January that's already sold out at the Bolton Center on Long Island, a show in Connecticut at the Cape uh, Theater um, that's selling well, and you know more dates are coming in. Um, but the music is essentially Grateful Dead, Marshall Tucker, and New Riders. And we, when we first started, my original thought was that we would play the first set would be New Riders, Marshall Tucker combination, and then the second set would be Grateful Dead. But I found that people were getting disappointed because they got late and they didn't hear any New Riders and or Marshall Tucker. And the Grateful Dead people were like, I don't want to wait a whole set to hear Grateful Dead. <laughs> you know? So we decided to just mish mash it up. And it works out great. So we just go out, play a couple of new writer songs. We jump into the dead. We play a, a Marshall Tucker song, back into the dead. A couple more new writer songs, back to some three or four dead songs, back to new writers. And and we, you know, we we do usually do two sets or one long set. Uh, and that's that's how it works, you know. And people love it, you know. Yeah, gives you a huge catalog to work from. You yeah, know. well, then there's that. And, and the surprising thing I got to say um, about the whole thing. Uh, is that, of course, it's the Grateful Dead. And, you know, in the Grateful Dead tribute world, I know what that world is. I know all the guys in the big bands with, that do that. Um, so I figured, well, people are just going to love that. And I'm in the New Riders, so I know that people are going to love the New Riders. I was unaware how popular and how much people really like Marshall Tucker. <laughs> you know, sometimes those Marshall Tucker songs get the biggest ovation of the night, you know, because not many people do it, first of all, you know. And, you know, and I've forgotten because I hadn't played it in years, what really great songs they have, you know, like Take the Highway, Heard It in a Love Song, 24 Hours, you know, Can't You See, you know, it, it's, they're just, they're like iconic songs, you know, so you can't go wrong with that catalog, you know. So the combination of those three bands, the catalog, you know, you can just go on and on. I love it. Yeah. Do, do you play anything after that point in the band's careers? Like, do you play dead stuff from the eighties? Yeah. Well, when we, again, when we first started, we stuck pretty much to the songs that were played that day, but you can only go so far with that, you know? 
So at this point, we just play the music of, meaning we play anything by the Grateful Dead that we want, anything by the New Rise that we want, anything by the Marshall Tucker Band that we want. And I find that to be much, people like it. How recent with the dead do you go? Do you go into like Picasso Moon era stuff, Vince Welnick era? We haven't done that yet, um, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. You know, um, you know, certainly stuff from Shakedown, certainly stuff from, um, I forget what's on what studio record, um, but we do some of the more modern stuff, you know. Uh, you know, we do playing in the band a lot. We do uh, Music Never Stops a lot. I mean, some songs we, that are, are in the rotation sort of regularly because we found that you pretty much have to pay, play these songs, you know. Um, well, playing is such an open canvas for a band. You go into playing. Once you get through the verse, it's wide open, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's and that's what happens most of the time, you know. Uh, unless there are time constraints, then we sort of trim things down, you know, like because some places you play, you got a curfew or you've got a set in 75 minutes or, or 90 minutes. And I don't at a festival. I don't like to go over because then that screws everything up down the line. And I, ha I hate it when people do it to me. So I almost never do that. You know. So if somebody did that to the radiators once at a festival I was at and I never forgave that band. I wouldn't go see them again. Yeah, I mean, you know, they, people, bands get carried away and they think that everybody is there to see them. They forget, oh, you know what? There's a headliner, you know, and they're getting really pissed off. <laughs> no doubt. Well, I, I'll just say on a personal level, I, I smiled. You know, the name of, of the English Town Project is is so um, reverential. Like you were saying, I grew up about 30 minutes from there um, oh. in Central Jersey. So even me, you know, coming up, I was more early, mid 90s when I was um, right. really getting into music, but there were so many head shops and, you know, that yeah. area, there's there's a lot going on. And um, so the second I had first, you know, seen that, I thought that is something that people will recognize. And yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of people were at that first show. Yeah. <laughs> that, oh, that yeah. First, first show. It's great. Yeah. I just think it's, it's nice because it does reference a particular point in time and mm -hmm. something that's so legendary and positive too, you yeah. know, just such a great, great event. So, yeah, I mean, and, and even if we had to just stick to the music that we, were played that day, there's still like 75 songs played. So we really, could, you know, we only play maybe, you know, I'm going to say the tops, the 20 or 30, 25 songs at a show because it's all you can play, you know? Um, and and if you look at the set list of the three bands that played that day, um, every song's great. So realistic, we don't really have to go much further than that. But as musicians, you get a little, you know, bored during that. Um, so let's, um, let's finish off with, you have the yeah. extended family. Is that a thing that's currently going on or is that just an umbrella term for your solo stuff and... Yeah, I would say that's an umbrella term uh, for what I do solo when I put a solo record out because up until, like, I'm in the process of writing, I'm written all the songs. We're going to start rehearsing these songs pretty soon. I'm going to record um, a, an album uh, this year, probably soon, probably starting in February. And I'll probably use the core of the English Town Project because I've been working with these guys now for 25 years. Uh, on and off so and they're totally into it so i'll probably use that as the core and um and then you know as things progress i'll ask some of my friends if they would be interested in playing and they usually say yes norm or jack these guys everybody um but the extended family was just a term i came up with because the umbrella of all the people it's not a band uh although it might turn into a band you know um has a logo it has its own logo um so it I, i'm i might use that as the name of the band um but uh for those albums uh, we are all one the christmas album uh i got blues for you um which sometimes gets overlooked which is probably the, one of the second best selling albums i have um uh, because it's a blues record specifically and it sells really well around the world and I have a version of the Hot Tuna song on that record, Death Don't Have No Mercy, a live version that I did at Brooklyn Bowl with a band called Jam Stampede, uh, which has Mike Miz, uh, Jason Crosby as guests, uh, and Barry Middehoff, 
it was a bunch of people. So I, it was just a live track. I put it on the album. We sent out the record. The record went out, and people people really love it. It was like number one in in France for like a month. <laughs> that particular song on the blues on the blues stations, you know, which is really unexpected, you know. Um, but yeah, the, the extended family, that's what that's about. You know, just an umbrella. English Town Project are going to have some dates. What other dates are we looking for? Or is there well, anything this, else on your calendar? At this particular moment in time, it's just the Bolton Center, which I'm guessing is going to sell out because they only have like 10 tickets left. Um, and it's not for another, uh, till the 20th. It's on the 20th. And then the next one after that is another theater in Connecticut called The Cape. Um and so uh, my agent is looking for some stuff to fill in in February, you know. Uh, and then once we get to the spring, April, uh, March, April, things start to really pick up. And usually I, I, that's when everything starts to fall into place. The festivals start to roll in, you know, other, other, other dates. The reason normally at this point in time, I'd have a bunch of dates um, uh, booked for January, February and March. But unfortunately, um, back in October, I had to cancel all my shows, October, November, December, I had a health issue, I had to deal with that. And so, you know, and I wasn't sure what would happen in, as we went forward. So I told the agent, like, just hold off for a minute. I've got these two big dates on, let's just leave those there. And we'll cross that bridge a little later on. And that's what, that's where we are now, you know. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to the Bolton Center. The Bolton Center is a fun little theater on Long Island. I've played there probably eight or nine times. I've never had a show there, no matter who I'm playing with. It doesn't sell out. <laughs> and so uh, I'm, I, you know, I'm fairly certain with only 14 tickets left or right. something like that. Good that mojo. Kind of out, you, know. you got good um, mojo with that place. Yeah. It's a, it's a great little theater. I've played there multiple times with the new writers, multiple times with Kerry Carney. English Town Project was there a couple of years ago. We sold it out. We were scheduled to play there in 2020. It got canceled. <laughs> Even though it was sold out, you know. If you are enjoying All That Jam, please like and subscribe to our social media channels at All That Jam Pod on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or visit our website, allthatjampod.com. Make sure to sign up for our email list and tune in every week for new episodes. Also, look for full interviews on our YouTube channel. And remember, stay beautiful, but don't stay underground too long.